welcome grade 11 accounting students. Are you guys excited to be back? I know I am. Now in today's lesson, guys, our focus is on cost accounting. Now remember previously in the syllabus, we've been focusing on financial accounting. So we're now gonna shift slightly forward to another section, or we're gonna move to something completely different called cost accounting. Right, now what do we mean by cost accounting? Before we start with the actual concepts, I want to look back at your grade eight, nine, and 10 accounting, and then look at the shift um, that we're now making in grade 11. So previously, you have been the accountant for a trading business. Okay, let's just write that down. Right, you've been an accountant for a trading business. What do we mean by a trading business? A business that will buy stock in order for them to sell the stock, right? You're buying stock, you're buying merchandise, and thereafter you are selling the merchandise. Now remember, when you buy your merchandise, you already have the cost price of the product. In other words, it's already predetermined when you buy the item. You then add on your markup, okay? So for example, you could add on a markup of, let's say 60%, and that would then give you your selling price. Now this is what we've been doing in accounting thus far. Cost price always been given to us, we've been adding a markup, and we are able then to determine our selling price. We are now uh, shifting to something different where you are no longer the accountant for a trading business, but rather you are now the accountant for a manufacturing business. Right, so in other words, you first need to make the product. So as a business, you first make the item, and once you've made or produced the item, you will then sell the item. Now, what does this imply for you as the accountant? If you are making, if you are producing the item, you need to establish how much it has costed you. So in other words, the cost price is not predetermined, but rather the cost price now needs to be calculated. Okay, so are you guys with me? So as the accountant, your first step is to establish that cost price. Once you've established your cost price, you are then able to add on a markup and from there determine the selling price. So that is the key focus in today's lesson. We're going to introduce you to some manufacturing concepts and then we're also going to touch on some calculations. So as usual, I'm going to ask you guys to have some pen and paper in front of you so you can work with me. And when we start with the calculations, remember I expect you guys to have your calculators. So let's get started. Okay. Right, guys, the first key concept that we're going to focus on is your direct material cost. Now, what do we mean by direct material cost? This refers to all the raw materials that is used during the production process. Right, so let's give you an example. Let's assume that we manufacture dresses. So we are working for a business that manufactures various types of dresses. Now, in this case, think about the raw materials that would be used to make a dress. Now, obviously, guys, you're going to need material or different types of fabric Okay, materials, you're going to need different types of fabric. You may need 
various types of dye, depending on whether you want to color the material or not. You will obviously need cotton for sewing the actual garment and so on. So those items are referred to as your raw materials. And once they are used in the production process, it is known as direct material cost. Okay, with me. Right, let's now move on to the next concept. The second concept, absolutely important, is your direct labor cost. Right, now we know the word labor obviously refers to the workers. Okay, so let's read through this definition. This refers to the salary or the wage that is paid to the employees who are involved directly in the manufacturing process. It is normally the factory workers. Right, so as far as your syllabus is concerned, it's, like I said, normally your factory workers, and you will find that your factory workers will earn a wage, not necessarily a salary. Any additional contributions made by the business. So for example, pension, medical aid, UIF, etc., is included in the calculation of your direct labor cost. Now, what do we mean by this? We've come across additional contributions when doing financial statements. Remember, guys, partnerships? Right, so how does this now impact on your direct labor cost? So, for example, if your factory workers earn a wage, okay, so let's assume they earn a total wage of 10,000 rand, Additional contributions that are made towards medical aid by the business. So, for example, the business contributes an additional 1,000 Rand towards the employee's medical aid fund. UIF, let's assume that's 70 Rand. Pension, the business contributes an additional 800 Rand. So, these additional costs would now be included in the calculation of your direct labor cost. This becomes much more clear when we do ledger accounts. I'm going to touch on this for now um, as I'm explaining the concepts. But remember, all of these concepts you need to be familiar with when we start with ledgers. OK, so direct labor cost, done. Right, let's now look at your third item. OK, factory overheads. Now, what do we mean by factory overheads? We've spoken about direct materials. We've spoken about direct labor. Now we come across something called factory overheads. Any indirect cost incurred in the manufacturing process are classified as factory overheads. Right, so what do we mean by indirect costs, guys? Obviously, the factory, if you are manufacturing dresses or you're making dresses, yes, you've got your fabric, you've got the workers that's going to sew um, the fabric into dresses, but you obviously need other items as well. So, for example, you need a premises and you may have to pay rent in order to use that factory. You need electricity for the sewing machines. You need water. Um, the factory needs to be cleaned. Um, there, there's various other indirect costs that would incurred by the business when manufacturing their items. So, let's read on. So, these will include water and electricity for the factory, insurance that is normally paid, again, for the factory, rent paid for the factory, etc. So in other words, there are lots of other indirect costs that will impact on the cost price or the making of, in this case, the dresses. Indirect materials and indirect labor is also classified as factory overheads. Right, two very, very important concepts. Indirect materials, indirect labor. Right, so I'm going to start with 
indirect materials. So we've already come across, okay, let's just write this down, indirect materials. We've already come across direct materials. Now we're coming across something called indirect materials. So indirect materials versus direct materials. And then we've also now come across indirect labor versus direct labor. Right, I want you guys for two minutes, I'm going to give you two minutes to think about these two concepts, indirect materials versus direct materials, indirect labor versus direct labor. Two minutes for you to think about these concepts and what's the difference between the two. Okay, right, so two minutes, guys, your time starts now. Okay, guys, your two minutes up. Let's see whether you were able to differentiate between indirect materials and direct materials, and then indirect labor versus direct labor. Right, so let's look at the concept of indirect materials. Now, remember, I've already explained direct materials are used in the actual making of the product. So what do we then mean by indirect materials? Now, indirect materials relates to other items that are not part of the manufacturing process, but are used later in the production. So for example, let's assume the dresses are then packed into boxes the boxes would be classified as your indirect materials. Are you guys with me? Right, if we had to manufacture, let's take a, a completely different item. So let's assume we manufacture furniture, uh, coffee tables as an example. So the direct materials would be the wood, okay, because that's needed in the actual production process um, for the manufacturing of the table. And the indirect material could be the polish that is used later on to finish the actual product, okay, as an example. Right, indirect labor versus direct labor. So let's start again by recapping on direct labor. So the, this involves the actual factory workers who physically make the product. Okay, so for example, um, 
in, in a factory, again, taking dresses as an example, the workers who physically sew the dresses, who, who operate the machines in order to sew the dresses, that would be classified as your direct labor. Indirect labor could be the factory cleaner, the person that cleans up afterwards, doesn't physically make the item, but is part of the factory, in other words, that manufacturing process or part of the factory in terms of cleaning up um, thereafter. Okay, right, so hopefully you guys were able to distinguish between the two. Okay, so our final concept, guys, Total production cost, final concept, before we take a quick ad break, we're not done yet. So total production cost, so to sum this up, what do we mean by total production cost? It's the combination of direct material cost plus direct labor cost plus your factory overheads, in other words, all your indirect factory costs. Okay, right, I think it's time for us to take a quick ad break and when you guys come back we will continue with the rest of the concepts. So see you guys straight after this. Welcome back guys. Right, let's carry on. Okay, we're going to now look, move on to our next activity. It's another activity for you guys to attempt first. And um, by doing this activity, you're going to be able to establish whether or not you are able to differentiate between direct material cost, direct labor cost, and factory overheads. Right, so let's look at what is required in terms of this activity. You are given the following. Sweets Galore manufactures a variety of chocolates and candy. Classify the following costs below. So in other words, classify them into direct material, direct labor, or factory overheads. Okay, so in a table, I've given you various expenses and I want you now to classify these expenses into either direct material, direct labor, or factory overheads. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys three minutes to do this activity. So for the first minute, you can probably work on the first four, and thereafter, I'm gonna scroll down so you can work on the balance of the transactions, okay. Right, so three minutes, guys, for you to classify. Your three minutes start now.
Okay, right guys, let's go through this activity and let's classify the accounts together. Right, let's start with the first expense. You've got the factory supervisor's salary. Now remember guys, the factory supervisor, he is responsible for making sure that everyone is working. So in other words, he doesn't physically make the product. So your factory supervisor's salary would be classified as an indirect expense, and because it's indirect, this would be factory overheads. Okay, sure you guys got that one correct. Right, let's look at the next items. So you've got sugar, cocoa, and milk. And remember, this business manufactures chocolates and candy. So immediately, these items would be the ingredients or the raw materials used to manufacture sweets or even chocolates. So this would be classified as your direct material cost. Right, third item, the February's rent paid for the factory. So the rent that is paid is also classified as an indirect expense. So anything related to the factory, but not directly related to the manufacturing of the item is correct factory overheads. Okay, right, let's look at the next um, cost given. Your weekly wage that is paid to the machine operators. So in other words, your factory workers, and absolutely correct guys, direct labor cost. Okay, fifth item, depreciation written off on the machinery. So again, related to the factory, and this is classified as an indirect expense. So therefore, anything indirectly related to the factory is factory overheads. Okay, right. Next item, boxes and crates that are used to pack the finished products. Okay, so this is obviously materials that are used to pack the finished products, and this would be classified because it's indirectly related to the production process, this would be factory overheads. Okay, right, next item, the salary paid to the security guard. Okay, so obviously to the person that guards the factory at night or even during the day. So the salary that is paid, not directly involved in the making of the items. So another indirect um, expense and therefore also factory overheads. Right, and then finally the last item, the electricity for the factory. So the electricity that is used is also classified as your factory overheads. Okay, right, not difficult guys, but please make sure that you are able to distinguish between the three cost um, um, concepts that I've discussed. Right, so let's now move on. Okay, right, so what I've now done guys is I've drawn a diagram of um, more or less the business premises to show you how these various costs need to be separated or put into certain boxes or categories. Right, so we've got the majority of the premises, which is for the factory or where the items are manufactured. 
Then we got a certain section of the office where all the admin, okay, and the paperwork is done, right? And then another part of the premises where the sales or the selling and the distribution of the products take place. Right, now why am I drawing this for you guys? Very, very important that you have this image in your mind whenever you are dealing with manufacturing accounts. Right, now remember, at the start of this lesson, I spoke about um, when, as an accountant, you need to establish what is the cost price in order to, or what was the cost price uh, when making the actual product. So remember, the actual manufacturing process takes place in the factory itself. So if you want to establish the cost price or how much did it cost you to manufacture the items, you need to take into account all the expenses that relate to the factory. We've spoken about three expenses already. So you've got your direct material cost plus your direct labor cost plus other indirect costs that's related to the factory, in other words, your factory overheads. Now, by adding these costs, you are then able to establish the total cost of production. In other words, you are able or you're getting closer to establishing the cost price per item that you've manufactured. Okay, so please remember, anything relating to the factory is going to help you to calculate the cost price of making the product. Right, what now happens to our other um, sections of, of the premises? So obviously there will be certain costs relating to admin, there will be certain costs relating to selling and distribution. But we need to remember to keep these costs in separate categories or separate boxes. Now, again, guys, when we start with ledger accounts, you're going to see why this particular diagram is absolutely important. Okay. Right. Let's now move on. Okay, so I've touched on admin costs, so let's now look at the actual definition of administration costs. This includes all admin costs to run a business. So, for example, your telephone expense, your stationery purchased, the salary of the secretary, depreciation on office equipment, etc. So, any cost relating to the office will be classified as an admin cost. It has got nothing to do with production, but it's classified as an administration cost. Right, next concept, selling and distribution cost. This is the cost incurred to market and sell the products. So any cost relating to the selling and distributing of the products will fall under the category selling and distribution costs. So for example, you may have a sales rep. So the salary that you pay to the sales rep will fall under selling and distribution cost. You obviously need to distribute the product to various stores. So the fuel that you use for the delivery truck will fall under the category sales and distribution. The depreciation that is written off on the vehicle that distributes the products again, falls under selling and distribution costs. Okay, hopefully you guys are getting these concepts. Right, absolutely important. I spoke about this already, but I'm going to remind you guys one more time. I want you to remember that admin costs and selling and distribution costs do not form part of the cost price of the manufactured products. 
Okay, so back to that diagram. Let's quickly look at the diagram one more time. So remember, the key for you as the accountant is to establish what is the cost price, how much did it cost the business to manufacture the products. So in other words, all expenses relating to the factory will then be taken into account. Anything relating to the office is kept separately under admin costs. Anything related to the selling of the product and the distributing of the product will fall under the category sales and distribution costs. Okay, got that. Right, hope, hoping that you guys did. Okay. Right, guys, we've got um, the next concepts that we're going to look at are calculation uh, formulas or calculation concepts. But I think before we look at your calculations, let's take another quick break and we'll get to this straight after the break. Welcome back, guys. Right, let's now move on and let's look at some calculations that you're going to be coming across when doing manufacturing accounts. So let's get started. The first calculation I've spoken about already, total manufacturing cost is the sum of your direct material cost plus direct labor cost plus your factory overheads. Okay, I've already mentioned this. Right, the second calculation that you're also going to come across is the unit cost or the cost price of one unit. In other words, how much did it cost the business to make one item? What is the cost price per unit? Right, so how are we going to do, go about establishing this? We're going to take our total manufacturing cost. So remember, guys, total manufacturing cost is what we calculated from up there, from calculation one. So we take total manufacturing cost, and we're going to then divide this by the number of units produced. Okay, you guys got that. Right, so for example, let's assume that we manufacture um, sweets and we're trying to establish the cost price of one sweet. So if we take our total manufacturing costs and let's assume we get a cost of a thousand rand and we divide this by the number of units produced, let's assume we've produced a hundred units. So the cost of making one sweet in this case would be an amount of 10 rand. 10 rand per suite. In other words, that is our cost price. Right, third calculation, prime cost. Prime cost, another word for prime cost is direct cost. So how do we get our direct cost? We're going to take direct material and we're going to simply add direct labor and that gives us our prime cost. If they ask you for prime cost per unit, you would simply take your total prime cost, in other words, direct material plus direct labor, and you then again divide it by number of units produced or number of units manufactured. Okay, right, next calculation that you're going to find often asked in your exams or tests Break even point, very important concept. We may touch on this again um, in the next lesson, but for now, a very brief explanation. Break even point is the point where there's no profit, nor is there a loss. In other words, how many units must be produced in order to cover all your costs? But at this point, you are not making a profit, nor are you making a loss. So, how do we calculate break even? We're going to take our total fixed costs and we're going to then divide this by contribution. Okay, right, going to make much more sense obviously when I do an example. Okay, right, let's now move on. Okay, so we're now going to look at an activity. Just want to quickly check. Okay, right, so the activity that we're now going to complete together, 
um, we've been given the following. Beach Toys is a small business that makes kites. The following is a list of the manufacturing cost for May 2016. Okay, so from the information that is given, raw materials used to make 100 kites, so the total raw material used is 4,500. Then you're given rent paid for the factory is 1,000 rand. You also have been given the salary paid to the factory supervisor, 2,800 rand. Wages paid to kite makers who complete or completed the kite. So this is obviously the wage paid for one kite. Okay, 30 rand. And then you've got insurance that is paid an amount of 400 rand. Right, so looking at this information, we're now going to do the following cost calculations. So the first calculation, what is your total production cost? Then we've got what is the cost price per kite? The next, the selling price. Okay, let's just include selling price per kite. If the business uses a markup of 60%, and then the last calculation, break-even point. Okay. Right, so the first calculation, I'm going to give you guys a minute because I think that's all you need. It shouldn't take you too long. Using the information that's up on the screen, I want you guys to calculate the total production cost. Okay, with me. Right, one minute, your time starts now. Okay, right guys, let's do this calculation together and I'm sure that you've got this one correct. Total production cost, remember, is the sum of direct material cost plus direct labor cost plus your factory overheads. Okay, so let's look at the first cost, direct material cost. So the raw materials that were used to make the kites, so remember you've manufactured in total 100 kites, so the total raw materials that were used was 4,500. So immediately my direct material cost is an amount of 4,500. Right, now let's look for direct labor cost. So my direct labor cost is obviously the workers who physically made the kites. So if I look further down, the wages that were paid to the kite makers that completed each kite, okay, per kite, an amount of 30 rand. Now remember, you've manufactured 100 kites, and for each kite that was manufactured, you've paid 30 rand in the form of a wage. So in total, you paid direct labor cost will be 30 times 100, which should give you an amount of 3,000. Okay, so my direct labor cost is sorted. Right, now let's look at our factory overhead. So this is obviously all the other indirect costs relating to the manufacturing process. So the rent paid for the factory, so that's an indirect cost, so the 1,000 rand. 
The salary that is paid to the factory supervisor, 2,800 rand, and the insurance for the factory, the 400 rand, is also an indirect cost. Okay, so I'm just going to grab the calculator. So let's add up our factory overheads will be an amount of 1,000 Okay, plus the 2,800, plus the 400, and that gives us an amount of 4,200. So plus 4,200. Right, so if we add up the three amounts, I've got the 4,200 there already. So plus 3,000, plus 4,500, Okay, and that gives us a total cost of 11,700. Okay, so let's write that down, 11,700. Okay, so that's your total production cost. Straightforward, not difficult. Right, let's move on to the next question. Okay, so the second question wants you to calculate the cost price per kite. So in other words, what is the cost price for one kite. How much did it cost the business to manufacture one kite? So let's do this, uh, this question together. So we know our total production cost is equal to, so if we go back, total production cost was 11,700. Okay, just put that down. So total production cost is 11,700. And we're going to now divide Okay, we're going to divide total production costs. We're going to divide this by the number of units that were produced or manufactured. Right, so how many kites were manufactured? It was 100, but let's just make sure. Raw materials used to make 100 kites. So we're going to divide the total production cost by 100, and that will give us the cost price for manufacturing one kite. So let's get the calculator out again. So we've got the 11,700, divide that by 100, and that should give us the cost of making one kite is 117 Rand. Okay, right, hopefully you guys got that. Right, so second question, completed, not difficult. Okay, let's move on now to our third question. The third question wants you to now calculate the selling price if the business uses a markup of 60%. So in other words, what will the kites sell at? What is the selling price if the markup is 60%? Right, I'm going to give you guys again a minute because it's not difficult to do this calculation. You've already got the cost price from the previous question, which was 117 Rand. So a minute should actually take you less than a minute. Calculate for me the selling price. Okay, your time starts now. One minute, guys, time starts now.
Okay, guys, so let's calculate the selling price. If the cost price is 117 right, uh, 17 rand. Right, selling price, very, very straightforward. Okay, so in order for us to calculate the selling price, we're obviously going to use our cost price. Okay, we're then going to add our markup. So we're going to multiply this by 100 plus our markup of 60%. And we're then going to divide this by 100. Okay. Right, so let's do that. Our cost price we know is 117. We're going to multiply this by 160 and we're then going to divide this by 100. Right, so let's do that. Okay, so 117 times 160. Okay, and we're then going to divide this by 100 and the kite will sell for a selling price of 187,2. Okay, so in other words, 187 rand and 20 cents. Okay, right, the last question, guys. Calculate break even point. So remember, I've touched on this concept um, already. Break even point at which point of production will the business break even? In other words, your expenses will equal to your income. At this point, there's no profit, nor is there a loss. Now, before we do this calculation, and I know we don't have much time left, so I don't think we're actually going to get to this calculation, I want to try and quickly explain the last two concepts that I've actually left out. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly try and find that slide. Okay, right, it's not here, so we've got about a minute and a half left. So I'm just going to quickly talk through the last two concepts, and hopefully in the next lesson, I can explain this in detail. Now, very, very important, we've spoken about cost accounts, we've spoken about various expenses involved in the manufacturing process. We also spoke about a bit on admin cost and selling and distribution cost. Now, it's very, very important that you are also able to classify these various costs into either a fixed cost or a variable cost. Now, what do we mean by a fixed cost? A fixed cost does not change with the number of units that you manufacture. Okay, so think about it. If I'm paying for uh, renting a premises, regardless of whether I use the premises or not for manufacturing, I still have to pay that rent. So in other words, that rent is regarded as a fixed cost. A variable cost, on the other hand, the word variable obviously comes from varies. It changes with the number of units produced. In other words, think about your materials that you're going to use if you're going to make dresses. The more dresses you manufacture, the more materials are required. So in other words, that would be considered a variable cost. It changes as the number of units increases or as you produce more units. Okay, not much time left for, for me to uh, give you guys a proper example or for me to do um, the question on break-even. So what I'm going to do is, I promise in the next lesson, we're going to go through these concepts one more time just to make sure you understand fixed and variable cost and, of course, the break-even calculation. So until next time, guys, from me, Mehesh Lal, I want you guys to study. I know, I know most of you have just gone back to school, but remember, in accounting, the more you practice, the better it is for you, especially when it comes to your exams and your test. Stay blessed, keep warm, and from me, until I see you next time, it's bye-bye.